Changanu is famous for its beautiful, unspoiled, pristine beaches and islands, uh, but the food is very unique as well. We're going to explore that in this episode of Street Food Journeys Malaysia. I hope you enjoy. This episode of Street Food Journeys features Masters of Malaysian Cuisine Chef Rene Jufri making a popular Tunganu snack called Neck Butt. Yours truly making a simplified Kropot Lekor. The Jet Lag Warriors Tunganu Food Trail. Mark Odi's take on Kropot Lekor. Ken Abroad tasting Tunganu food. Shao Kani Abbas with his rundown on places of interest in Tunganu. And our MOMC and MOMC at Heart Chefs answer the question, what dishes do you think of when you think of Tunganu? Award-winning tour guide Shaokani Abbas joins us to talk about his list of must-visit places in Tunganu. Shaokani, great to have you. And we are talking about Tunganu. Never been to Tunganu, so what should I look forward to? Well, this is a place you must visit, <laughs> Jackie. Okay. Anyway, Tunganu is on the eastern part of the peninsula of Malaysia. And the most important one thing I love about Tunganu is the islands of of the in the South China Sea. And uh, among the islands which worth mentioning is Presentian Island, Rendang Island, you know, all these are uh, great place for diving, to dive, to see the corals under the sea, swim among the turtles and the fish, colorful fish, you know, this is a very nice part of the Tranganu. How, how are the islands different? Are they all pretty much the same or like do each one have like different features? Well, every island have their own identity. But the most common part is the diving. Uh, okay. That's, that's, a, that's the best part of it. Okay. So, uh, what time of the year would you go to Tranganu to visit the islands? Well, don't go in December or January. You know, these are the monsoon time. A lot of, a lot okay. of strong winds. But the best time is June, July, August. And that's the best time to go. Okay. Great, great. Sounds great. And what else would you do in Tranganu if you don't go to the islands? Well, to me, I would prefer to go and see the handicraft. Tranganu is very rich in handicraft, especially songket and batik and brassware. I go there to buy my batik and songket, not in my hometown, but in, I go to Tranganu. And beside the handicraft, the places of interest which I like to go to Tranganu is to visit the biggest museum in Malaysia, Tranganu Museum. Yeah, it's very big, oh. huge. And also... Okay. So the the mosque there are several mosques there with beautiful architecture. I okay. should get some of the mosques there. Sure, sure. So with Tranganu Museum, is it like um, does it store like Tranganu specific artifacts or like from all of Malaysia? No, especially on Tranganu itself, and they okay. have uh, very good collections there. Okay. Especially oh. on the uh, hand, handicraft, the old handicraft, things are things very good. Sure, sure. Okay, interesting. Okay, now tell me about the food. What do you like about Tranganu food? All right. When I go to Tranganu, the first thing I will look for breakfast is nasi dagang. That's my favorite thing for nasi dagang. And for snacks, I usually for the fish crackers or the sata, I mean, of fish and that, you know, and also kropot leko. Uh, the, like sausage, like you know, fish, and you dip it with chili sauce. And uh, the, the, for the lunch, I would prefer the nasi kerabu, where the rice is uh, blue in color because they use the uh, the to, to make it blue. And uh, this is my favorite food. Whenever I go for Tranganu, I will not miss this type of food. There are more things there, but um, I, I these are the, the things I can I love the most. Okay, I'm sure. Uh, yeah, that sounds like a lot to keep us busy for a while in Tranganu. Okay, yeah, a, lot, a lot. But uh, some of the things there are very sweet, and and uh -huh. don't forget, better visit the the market. 
that's the best place to see the locals how they the they sell the things and a lot of souvenirs there the market in Pasar Payang in uh, Kuala Terengganu. Okay, Pasar Payang Kuala Terengganu. Okay, great. I'm going to look it up. Thank you so much for this, uh, Michelle Kani. Okay, bye bye. I'll see you later. Bye. The Jet Lag Warriors are a full-time traveling couple from Canada who spent quite a bit of time in Trangano. Here's a look at their experience. Very excited. We're going to a place called Fauzi, which is like world famous if you're into Nasty Caribou. And it's already people lining up outside. Yeah, it's right across. Look at the lineup, guys. Wow, the lineup is serious. Well, it must be good food then. All right, let's go. Looks amazing. I'm nervous we did something wrong because the lineup is so long and it's moving so fast and it's so hectic at the front. I'm nervous we missed the gravy. I don't know if you guys saw our nasty dugging video, but we missed the gravy and everyone's commenting like, bro, how can you have nasty dugging with no gravy? Oh, no. So I think everything's here. What do we have here? We have this. I don't know what it is. This looks like a sausage almost. Maybe sausage, salted egg, piece of chicken. You've got this blue rice, which is amazing oh. looking. Very not from food coloring which is what i was thinking it looks it looks a little bit fake it, i'm sure it's not if it was food right. coloring it wouldn't be a famous dish it has to right. be natural right right and then you've got some veggies on top and some sambal on top yeah i the mean i'm veggies, excited the veggies are, looks very fresh it's called ulam i think looks fresh mm -hmm. everyone seems to be eating with their hands okay so i think the first step is to get a little mix going on here nice. you know don't be afraid matt L.A. with his hands i'm i'm uh i'm excited for this ivana Nice and warm on your hands here. Blue rice. Here we go. How is that? Oh, it's really fresh, Ivana. Wow. It's almost like eating a salad. Wow. This is really good, Ivana. All it's right. really crispy. The, all the vegetables are really crunchy and it's spicy. And the blue rice is just so beautiful, it makes it taste better. <laughs> MOMC's René Jufri is a Michelin-trained chef and Trunganu native. He shows us how to make an iconic Trunganu snack called neck butt. Hi, hello everyone. So, hope everyone is doing well. I'm Chef René. Welcome back to Masters of Malaysian Cuisine and Tourism Malaysia. Hi Jackie, hope everything is okay over there. So, today I'm uh, bringing a special dish from the east coast of Malaysia, Kuala Terengganu. So this dish is a sweet dish, all right, it's a dessert. It's called kueh nekbat. Let's start with the recipes and the ingredients. Um, yeah, Rene, so what are you making for us? Hi, right, so today I'm going to prepare a sweet dessert from uh, Terengganu, from the East Coast. It's called nekbat, uh, it's called nekbat. So it's a sweet that's uh, quite common in uh, Terengganu itself. Okay, nekbat, like is it, is that a Malay word or is it? Is it a Malay sweet or did it come from somewhere else? Yeah, it's, it's uh, a very uh, Malay and uh, traditional in uh, Trangano. It's, it's from the accent itself, Nekbat, yeah. Okay, okay. Yeah. So it doesn't actually mean anything, like it's not a word? No. No? It's, uh, okay. Yeah. Okay, cool. <laughs> I've never heard of it. I've never seen that <laughs> yet. Okay, I'm, ke I'm keen to find out what it's like. <laughs> so let's have a look. Very straightforward. You have rice flour, all right? Eggs. Right now you have eggs. The eggs for the recipe you have sugar this is for and then that's for the neck but uh, dough which is the, the cake like and then you have after that you need to soak them you have to once you prepare the neck but you have to soak the neck but with the uh, sugar syrup so you have sugar some uh, clove and then we have some uh, pandan leaf and some water so it's quite straightforward on the, on the ingredients so what you need to do first is that the rice flour we toast the rice flour a little bit on a pan on a very low heat uh, what does that actually do? I've never, I, I sometimes see the whole thing about toasting rice now. I've never yeah. done it. Okay. It's quite interesting that you get a crunch. Uh, if you make a biscuit, you get a, a bite to it. And also, it's, um, the process is actually to dry up the, the flour. Okay. Okay. Cool. Yeah. Right. So, next, uh, once you toast the flour, you just put it on the side. Now, we're going to just mix the eggs first with the eggs and the sugar. 
So almost like a uh, similar process like you do a sponge, for example. So you want to beat up the eggs and sugar to fluff it up. So it's okay. something like bahulu uh, or the sponge, right? So just beat the, the eggs and sugar until it's very fluffy. That you can see now it's very creamy. And okay. what you do next is to fold the rice flour little by little. You don't want to put everything together because uh, the thing is you already aerated the, the uh, eggs and uh, sugar, right? So that's the actual body for the neck bite. So it's um, once later on, you will see the texture. It's slightly similar to baulu, but it's more crunchier. It's a bit more drier, actually, drier and crunchier, yeah. Okay, okay. now uh, with the whole folding thing, uh, do you have to do it in just one direction or? Cause... Yeah, you, you can do one direction or only once and twice, that's it. You don't uh, do like a, a whole uh, beating process. Depend, yeah. depend okay, okay, sure. So now the mold, uh, what we do is just we line it a little bit of oil and heat it up in the oven for a while to get the temperature to warm the, the mold. That's the same yeah. mold that we use for uh, Kui Kui, okay, okay, okay. Yeah, cool. So even uh, bahulu, you can have the same one as well. Yeah, yeah. Version, yeah. Okay, so once you spoon it up, uh, put it in the oven 180 degrees until it's golden. It takes around around uh, eight to ten minutes. Okay. Right. So you can see now when it's ready, when you oh. flip it, yeah, you get the, the shape of the mold. So it doesn't mean uh, this particular mold by itself. You can always uh, opt it for a different mold, different shape, uh, okay. similar to the floor, like the baulu flower is, is also one of the options. And also maybe you can try with the uh, the fish look like. Okay. Yeah, yeah. 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 So now we're going to prepare the syrup. Okay. Was the mold like, like a that. copper mold or what was it? Uh, that's a, yeah, that's actually a mixed uh, copper brass. Okay, okay. Yeah, sure. It's a mix, yeah. So syrup and just two cloves. Now, yeah, we're making the syrup. So the, the syrup has an infuse of clove. Okay. That's what makes it unique as well. So just simple syrup, you have the sugar and water, bring it up to boil with the clove and pandan to infuse the flavor. Once it's ready, you drop the uh, neck bud uh, cake into it. Okay. So what it, it does now is that the cake kind of absorbs the syrup and right. makes it tender. Okay. Yeah. The difference with the... Like, the, the syrup looks very thin. It's not like a thick syrupy. Yeah, it's, it's not too uh, thick like a, um, how would say, not too like honey honey texture or syrup syrup thick texture. It's just okay. nice that uh, it's already sweet and uh, you just want to probably reduce it one third. Okay. It's sugar itself, yeah. Oh, fascinating. Yeah. And you just eat it like this. Yeah. So once it's soaked, you just serve it as such, and uh, quite straightforward. The thing is, the difference with the dough, the cake itself, it's uh more crunchy and more dry. Or the okay. Spoon. That's why you have to soak it to make it uh, tender again. Ah, right, right, right. That's very interesting. Yeah. I, I, I kind of expected it to be really soggy when you soak it like that, but it's not soggy when you it eat it. It won't be too extremely soggy. So it's just, um, it's like, imagine a madeleine or a sponge cake. Yeah. It's been lightly soaked uh, with syrup, that's it. Okay, okay. Yeah. Oh, interesting. I'll have to try that. Cool. Right here. Yeah. Well, thanks for that, Renee. I'm so fascinated by Tranganu food. Never, never been to Tranganu, so I have no idea. <laughs> All right. But yeah. <laughs> okay, cool. I'll see you later. Thanks again. All right. Thank you. We are in Kamaman. Here we are. So this morning we had a very special breakfast at a restaurant called Tin Kim Leng restaurant that serves Kamaman specialty, the fish noodles. <laughs> just got used to eating rice for breakfast and now Ivana's got me eating fish for breakfast. Okay, we got the specialty from Kamaman. Fish noodles. It smells good, isn't it, Steve? Ooh. 
so fishy. It smells fishy, but we'll try it. Look at the amount of sambal. So much sambal in there. Let's see. I've never... I don't know what type of fish this is, but let's see. Let's see if I like it. If I'm okay with it, Steve will be okay with it, hopefully. But it, I agree, it smells kind of fishy. I don't know if you're supposed to eat it just like this or with the noodles. It's okay, it's good. And I got chum, of course. A mix of coffee and tea. But here we are, it's pretty good so far. I like, I like the fish. Let me just mix this. Ooh, so much sambal. Let me just taste the noodles. Hopefully my uh, chopstick skill is good. <laughs> mm. The noodles is good. Try it, Steve. Oh, I'm nervous to try, but... Uh... Come on, Steve. The problem is, it's breakfast, man. You know? First meal of the day. You want to start off the day with something nice. This looks good actually. The soup and the noodles look really good. It is really good. In my head, I can taste fish in there. <laughs> I know there's no fish in there, but because this is here, I ate that and I thought, oh, it tastes fishy. Uh, <laughs> it's all in my head, Iwana. But how is the noodle? Uh, yeah, yeah. It's really good. It tastes good. Um, the soup is good, right? Yeah. I can taste some fish in there, even though there's not. This is so not me. I think you should put the chilies and lime on top of the fish. Uh, just rip it open, no? Yes or no? You don't know? I don't know. If you don't know, I don't know, Ivana. Maybe no skin. Yeah, no skin is uh, it's safe. Play safe. Oh, you're eating it by itself. No lime, no chili, no noodles. Your face is okay. It's actually quite good. Really? Not fishy at all. Wow. Uh, this is good, Ivana. Good? Yeah, so this is good. This is good. Awesome. I'll finish everything. Wow. Wow. I saw this fish on the plate, just the way the fish is like this. I was like, oh, I don't want this, man. No, it's really good. In my head, I was having a phobia. I tell you what, overall, this has been a success. I thought I was gonna eat some of this, not like it, and go somewhere else for breakfast. That's what I thought was gonna happen today. This is good, I'll finish this, yummy. Hear what YouTube and TikTok star Marco D has to say about Karapot Lekor. The Karapot Lekor. Now, I love this Karapot Lekor. It's just such a nice snack. Mwah. It's like really fishy. It's like really doughy. And I love all the doughy things. There's just one really famous place in Terragani where they have the Karapot Lekor. And I went there and they had all these different flavors, all these additions, and it's really good. Now, when I buy the Karapot Lekor, they always have this. And I don't know what it is. Um, I tried to Google, uh, but nothing came up. So tell me what this is. This stuff is really good as well. The Carrot Pop Liqueur, I know, is really good. Carrot Pop Liqueur, I'm very sure. Carrot Pop Liqueur is a well-loved fish sausage snack in Tranganu. In this segment, I show a simplified recipe you can try at home. So in this particular segment, I'm going to make a simplified version of croppot lecor. Croppot lecor usually is made using a uh, chopped mackerel, okay, like a dark, uh, firm fleshed fish. But uh, I'm just going to cheat completely and use basso fillets, which you can easily find in your local Australian supermarket in the freezer section, okay. So basso fillets, we're going to mince it into a paste and I'm just seasoning it with uh, some pepper and a little bit of sugar because batter fillets tend to be quite bland and also you can add some salt and some chicken powder in here okay so just blitzing it in my food processor briefly and we're going to transfer them into a stainless steel bowl there's about a half kilo of batter fillet mince here and then what we're going to do is we're going to add 
about 50% of its weight in uh, starch. Okay, we're going to use peel for starch. Though typically, you would use sago, sago flour. Okay, sago starch. But you see how it's a very, very soft paste at the moment. Now, if you were using a firm flesh to fish, you would want to add some ice water in your food processor to blend it. Okay, otherwise it'll be too dry. Uh, but because basil fillets tend to be very wet, uh, I haven't had to add any additional water to it. But now we want to add flour, uh, starch as much as you can to turn it into a soft dough. Okay, so it will start out really sticky and you're just going to add more starch to it to, uh, to the point where you can actually uh, form it into sausages. Okay, so these are called fish sausages translated into English. Now, what you want to do is actually cook them. Uh, so we're going to heat up some water, bring them to a boil in a saucepan. And we're going to add some uh, flour. I'm using, again, tapioca starch. You can use cornstarch or whatever else to help um, to form the, the fish sausages, okay, so they don't stick together. Um, so you want to shape them into sausage shapes. And then once the water comes to a boil, you just add it into the pot, okay? Now you're just going to make sure you don't, um, the sausages don't stick to the bottom of the pot. So just gently lift them up with a ladle if they do, okay? And then you're just going to simmer them for a minute or so, or a minute or two, till they float up to the surface and stay floating up. And once they do, you can take them out and just drain them. And just repeat the process with the rest of the fish. They're not going to look smooth like your typical uh, sausages, okay? They're going to look a little bit crinkly and a little bit rough and that's fine. Okay, so now what you want to do is actually deep fry them. I've just got some oil in that pot over there, in that uh, wok. And you want to heat it up to about 160, 170 degrees. And just make sure the sausages aren't still dripping wet. And just add them to the oil and fry them up. And you notice the color of these uh, fish sausages are like a creamy pale uh, color. But typically in Malaysia, the Kropot Lake or the, because of the kind of fish they use, they will actually look great. Um, so it really depends on the kind of fish that you're using. And you just want to fry them up till they're a little bit aromatic, a little bit um, lightly toasted. And you're going to find when you fry them up that they will expand in the oil. But once they cool down, they'll shrink back up. And finally, you want to dip together with it. You can just use a bottled chili sauce, bottled Malaysian chili sauce, or you can make your own dip. I'm using some blended uh, fresh chilies there. And just adding a little bit of tomato ketchup to it. You can add some water to it if it's too dry, okay? And I'm just uh, sweetening it up a bit with some sugar. And if it's too runny, then you can thicken it up with a little bit of a cornstarch or tapioca starch mixed with cold water to finish it off. And that's your chili dip. So pretty straightforward. Give it a shot and let me know how it turns out. Okay. Again, this is your simplified, Aussie-fied way to quickly put together a delicious snack that's inspired by the Kropot Lekho in Tunganu. Enjoy! Ken Abroad is a full-time traveller based in Southeast Asia. Let's check in on his experience of Tunganu food. <laughs> hey, I'm looking for Nazi Dagang. Oh, Nazi Dagang. This one? Yes. And uh, you put a tuna fish? Oh, yes. Yes. Ah. Okay, I would like to try it. Nazi <laughs> Dagang. <laughs> oh, we have the, the tuna fish that is still looking like a fish. What's that? Ah, okay. Or maybe I can get a, yeah. Maybe let's get a fork or a spoon as well. Ah, okay. Terima kasih. Okay, how much? Three ringgit. Three. Three ringgit. Ah, three okay. Ringgit.
Okay. Three wing it. Okay. Three, right? One, two. Okay. 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 Thank you. Okay. Right. Three wing it. 60 cents in euro. Sounds like a good deal for me. It's just rice with uh, some uh, or a small piece of tuna fish and some. Uh, what is the name of these? I think it's not a regular cucumber. It's called something else in, in English, I think. And mix it a little bit inside the rice. Wow, that's a huge peach of tuna fish. Mm. Wow. Wow. Nice flavor. Yeah, so I'm almost done. And I have to say, I really like it. It is a simple dish, just tuna fish, rice, and some cucumber, uh, and some onions, and maybe there's coconut inside, maybe not. <laughs> but it's a simple dish, but sometimes the simplest dishes, or the simplest dishes, are the best ones. Laksa Terengganu, and normally the Peranakan community will have this. Mm. And it comes with lots of ulam mm. yeah. and some yeah. Peranakan kui. Very nice. Very nice. Nice. All right, Laksa Terengganu. Wow, I think every state has its own laksa, so I don't know how different this will make. Let's try. I like it. It's so fresh with all the ulam. I like it. I like it, Steve. I asked our MOMC chefs, Johari Edris and Renee Jufri, and MOMC at Hearts, Lisa Yeo, what dishes they think of when they think of Trangano. Here are their answers. Renee Johari here. So, thinking of my favorite uh, dishes if I think about Kuala Trangano. So, Kuala Terengganu, of course, is a coastal uh, east coast of Malaysia. It has a lot of seafood offerings. So, one of the favorite dish will be keropok leko. So, I think this is uh, everyone's favorite from Kuala Terengganu, and followed by nasi dagang. Okay, this is also a breakfast dish actually that is uh, a local favorite. And you have lo honko. So, lo honko is a dried mangosteen, so which is uh, prepared into a broth. And have it like a soup. So this is quite interesting from Trangano. And you have satar, not forgetting pulut lepa and kueh kasida. Okay, so jalang jalang makan ganu kita. So enjoy kuala Trangano. If you enter Trangano, normally uh, for breakfast I always go for nasi dagang. Sometimes they call it nasi mi, also nasi minyak, and maybe for a, a snack. You can always go for pulut lepa, a very nice pulut lepa down there. And of course, for maybe uh, afternoon tea, you can always go for akok manis or maybe a uh, neck bud. And of course, don't forget to go to the seaside. You can find those a lot of those um, hawker style selling ICT, ikan celup tepung. That means uh, uh, fish dip na better. And of course, if you go to Tengganu, you must taste kropok leko. Otherwise, you are not in Tengganu. When I think of Trangano, definitely the first thing that comes into my mind has to be nasi dagang and my all-time favorite keropo in the whole wide world, keropo leko. Oh my god, I like the I like the thin one, right? And it's so crispy, and you have it with like chili sauce. <sighs> I can die hoping I can eat it again. I wish I can eat it again. But I want to eat where you know, Pulau Redang. Lie down at the beach, santai, masuk mulut, makan keropok leko. After that, makan nasi dagang. That I swear is heaven on earth. <laughs> Well, I hope that's given you a little bit more of an idea of Tonganu and its food. Uh, don't forget, if you want the recipes and all the bonus content we could fit into this episode, you need to sign up, okay, at malaysianchefs.com slash streetfoodjourneys. And I'll see you back here next week. We're doing Penang. I'm Jackie M. Have a great week ahead.